Hey everybody, I'm Dieter Kurtenbach. I'm in Oakland. The Warriors just got done beating the Dallas Mavericks 119-114 in the Lone Star State. And I got three things for you off of the Warriors win. Number one, we got to talk about threes. We got to talk about Stephen Curry knocking down 11 in the Mavericks grill. None bigger than the game winner. Less than a minute left. And let's talk about this play real fast. It says 11-3 of the game. Normally in a situation like the Warriors were in, 114-114, less than a minute left, Warriors have the ball. They run the best play in basketball, which is a Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry pick and roll. They did not do that on Sunday night. That was the play call. That's what Steph Curry thought was happening, except Kevin Durant over on the wing with Stephen Curry said, no, no, no. Passes the ball right back and tells Stephen Curry, knock the shot down. ISO to you, my man. And what did Stephen Curry do? Knocks the shot down. Warriors, they didn't win on the spot. But they won the game off of that shot. According to Steve Kerr and Kevin Durant, Durant was changing plays in the huddle. He wanted to ride Stephen Curry's hot hand all the way down the stretch. It wasn't, oh, I don't have it tonight. Durant had 28 points. He was playing really well. He just wanted to make sure that the ball was in the best player's hands on Sunday night. And the best player on Sunday night was Stephen Curry. And he, he showed it off in the final seconds. Very encouraging, I would imagine, for Warriors fans seeing those two figure out how to navigate a, a pretty rocky waters, right? Two of the greatest players of all time, two of the greatest scorers of all time. Who do you give the ball to in the final seconds? They're figuring it out on their own. I'm not sure Steve Kerr knows the answer. I know I don't know the answer. I don't think anyone knows the answer. But those two are figuring it out in real time, and it has to be very encouraging with the playoffs. They're approaching a lot faster then I think we give them credit for approaching. Uh, 11 of 19 for three for Stephen Curry. Let, let's bring that into some context. Stephen Curry has now made 10 or more three-pointers 12 times in his NBA career. The Warriors have now won 11 straight games when Stephen Curry makes 10 or more three-pointers. Second on that list of 10 or more three-pointer games is Klay Thompson. He has four. J.R. Smith has three because J.R. Smith has no conscience, conscience and will shoot as much as he wants. Uh, and no one else in NBA history has more than one. So again, Stephen Curry with 12. Next highest, Klay Thompson, four. This dude's not real. Totally changing the game. And we're watching it unfold on a nightly basis. And I want to bring this into juxtaposition real fast. Because James Harden scored 38 points to continue his MVP candidacy on Sunday night. But James Harden scored 38 points on 11 of 32 shooting, one of 17 from beyond the arc, and 15 of 16 from the free throw line. Not a good game. Of course, the Rockets lost. Meanwhile, Stephen Curry, 53% from the floor, 11 of 19 from beyond the arc. He only got three free throws in the contest. He made all three of them, but Stephen Curry goes for 48, and he only needed, needed for three free throws. Say that two times fast. James Harden, 38 points. He needed 15 to get to that number. I don't know who the MVP of the NBA is. It might be Harden. It might be Giannis Antetokounmpo. It might be Steph Curry. But I know who's more entertaining to watch between Harden and Curry. There's no question about it. It's Wardell, Stephen, Curry. Second thing from this game. We're not talking about MVPs. We're talking about bench players here. But I thought Alfonso McKinney turned in a really nice shift on Sunday. McKinney is never going to get back that spark that he had. He's never going to be as red hot as he was at the beginning of the season. He, he just came out of the gates so impressively. It's going to be hard to recapture that magic. But Alfonso McKinney is a scrapper, and he fights for every minute that he gets. And the Warriors sometimes really, really need that. And tonight was one of those nights. The Warriors just look disinterested. It's the kind of same apathetic stuff. We'll just let our offense carry us through. But Alfonso McKinney comes in, he pulls down three offensive rebounds, he knocks down two threes, four or five from the floor, energy, 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 and he brought the Warriors up with him a little bit. It was a spark that the Warriors needed. Alfonso McKinney provided it on Sunday night. He's never going to get back again to that early season form, but sometimes he looks like a godsend for the Golden State Warriors. Tonight was one of those nights. Would be remiss not to mention Jonas Jurebko with four offensive rebounds. He's been so good all year. Jordan Bell gets minutes in this game, and this is big because it wasn't a great matchup game for Jordan Bell, but Steve Kerr had to go to him. I'll mention, I'll tell you why in a second. And I thought he played a really solid shift. Wasn't spectacular, doesn't pop on the box score, but eight minutes, solid shifts. Maybe this is the confidence game that Jordan Bell needed. Maybe this is the kind of tape that he needed to put together to give Steve Kerr a little bit more confidence to go to him because they have been running Draymond Green ragged behind Kevon Looney as the backup center. 
I know Boogie's coming back later this week, DeMarcus Cousins, and he's going to take up plenty of those center minutes, no doubt about it. But just having Jordan Bell as a trustworthy third option is so big for Golden State, and, and maybe this is the start of it. On the flip side of Jordan Bell's nice night, a bad night for Kevon Looney, 16 minutes, minus nine. DeAndre Jordan, DeAndre Jordan's a big man, and he, he kind of pushed Jordan, uh, Kevon Looney around. He did not push Jordan Bell around. Uh, he, he pushed Kevon Looney around, and maybe this is why the Warriors are, are not keen on viewing Kevon Looney as a center. He has been outstanding. He is he was due a bad game, but still, Warrior center problems. They might not go away entirely when, when Boogie shows up. Let's talk about another center, and this is another center who's also a power forward, and he also guards point guards. Uh, Draymond Green... The Warriors dodged a bullet in this game. He goes out in the first half with a knee injury. He missed some time in the second half with presumably the same injury, but he comes in for a uh, outstanding stretch. They bring in the Hamptons Five, the, the super death lineup, whatever you want to call it, Draymond Green at center for the final four or so minutes of this contest, a tight contest. And Draymond Green was absolutely transcendent on the defensive side. His offensive game hasn't been very good lately. But his defense has gone to another level. And you know when Draymond Green's on another level, it is spellbinding stuff. Uh, his block on Jalen Brunson in the final minute, I think Andre Iguodala got it first. But nevertheless, it was a fantastic play. He forces Luka Doncic to make a pass. He denies Brunson at the rim. Warriors win the game on that play just as much as Stephen Curry's three-point dagger in Dorian Finney-Smith's face. Uh, but the entire fourth quarter, he was awesome. He was guarding both Jordan and Luka Doncic, the presumptive rookie of the year and a true superstar. Doncic is totally awesome. He's guarding a point guard and a center, and he's seamless in doing it. Him and Andre Iguodala turned in really good performances on the defensive end on Sunday. And this is another point of encouragement for Warriors fans because this team hasn't played good defense all year. They put it together for spurts, but really... It's been bad. I think they're down to 18th in overall team defense. That is not championship level. And if they want to get back to the finals for a fifth straight year, they're going to have to up their game. The rest of the NBA has gotten so much better over the past year. Nights like Sunday are encouraging. They are moments that you can point to and say the Warriors can, quote unquote, flip the switch. They know how to play championship defense. We saw a few minutes on Sunday night. Need to see more of it. No doubt, but just a good reminder that it's there. They just haven't been showing it all that often. Warriors have a big game on Tuesday. It is against the upstart, insurgent, well, I don't know you want to call them. The Denver Nuggets don't seem to want to admit that they're anything other than a contender for the number one seed in the Western Conference. Warriors are going to go to Denver on Tuesday, and we'll see. We'll, we'll see if they're a true number one contender for the Western Conference. Uh, should be a fascinating game. One of the best ones of the year. I can't wait to watch it. We will talk to you after that one.